everybody let's start the discussion of reflex part 2 in the previous lecture of physiology of reflexes we have learned regarding basics of stretch reflex the pathway of reflex arc and how the alpha motor neuron and gamma motor neuron stimulation leads to changes in muscle spindle and how the muscle spindle functions in regulation of smooth and coordinated activity now to maintain the body posture and other activities some more additional reflex are required let's see this in the reflex 2 so this is our basic stretch reflex which we have learned in detail in our first lecture alpha motor neuron gamma motor neuron from the muscle spindle after the stretch impulse will go back to the spinal cord through sensory nerve it will activate alpha motor neuron leading to muscle contraction this is the reflex action now the descending tracks are converging some are ending on gamma motor neuron and this will lead to stimulation of muscle spindle which is a sense organ of change in muscle length in the muscle it will send sensory impulses back to the spinal cord through sensory nerve which will activate again alpha motor neuron leading to muscle contraction that means gamma motor neuron stimulation leads to indirect muscle contraction through sensory pathway and alpha motor neuron and some descending tracks are directly acting on alpha motor neuron and executing the action of muscle contraction that's why alpha motor neuron also called as spinal common pathway so this was our initial reflex one which we have learned in detail now moving forward now there are <coughs> some more receptor present in the muscle apart from the muscle spindle so here at the tendon of the muscle there are some receptor they are called as golgi tendon organ as location in the tendon they are tendon and discovered by the scientists golgi so these are golgi tendon organ now here you can see these are having sensory fibers again from here going to the spinal cord so these fibers are called as ib fiber those are arising from muscle spindle they were called as ia type 1 fiber type a fiber and these are called as b fiber now they are ending on you can see here they are ending on some interneurons so they are ending on this interneuron which is inhibitory in nature now this interneuron is making synaptic connection with our alpha motor neuron so this is our alpha motor neuron which is supplying our extra fusel fiber so this is the basic pathway of this reflex now we'll see how this reflex works this is our muscle i have done a schematic diagram to make understanding a better and with animation this is our muscle from the muscle spindle if you recall this is the type a fiber arising from the center that is nuclear back fiber this is primary afferent ia this is our alpha motor neuron which is supplying the extra fusel fiber of a muscle so these are the secondary afferents arising from nuclear chain fibers and back fibers and here you can see they are giving some connection to the ascending tracts also so these are secondary afferents now this is our gamma motor neuron which is supplying our muscle spindle so this basic sketch we have learned in the last lecture regarding the reflexes ascending fibers and descending now this addition you can see this is the receptor this is the receptor present in both tendons okay so this is called as golgi tendon organ so this is the sense organ or receptor present in the tendon one which is present inside the muscle belly this is the muscle spindle and this is present in the tendon called as golgi tendon organ now from here again sensory nerve is arising and going to the spinal cord this is one b afferent okay just to make a difference the primary afferent from muscle spindle are one a these are the one b afferents now see the muscle is contracting because of anything either from alpha motor neuron stimulation or gamma motor neuron stimulation indirectly or by stretch whatever this is the muscle is contracting now we have seen the length is decrease muscle is contracting 
no these are sense organs are sensing change in length of the muscle length up to certain limit they will not be active but if the stretch is more the muscle is contracted very strongly so there are chances that it can get avulsions from the bone endings here so here the origin insertion so to protect this nature has given this galgi dinner organ so immediately when the muscle is contracting very strongly they get stimulated impulse generated here you can see now there is a generation of impulse here okay so this action protein generated this will travel along this 1b fiber to the spinal cord okay now they will make connection with one more interneuron so this is the interneuron they are making synaptic connection action protein generated here and this will send impulse to the alpha motor neuron which are inhibitory in nature so this is the inhibitory interneuron present in the spinal cord which is making synaptic connection with 1b afferent fiber and which is now making synaptic connection with our alpha motor neuron now what happens see because of this impulse generated in alpha motor neuron this will go to extra physical fiber and they as they are inhibited muscle relaxes so this is the response this is called as inverse stretch reflex means initially we are stretching a muscle for contraction now when muscle contracts after after certain limit when the contraction is very strong to protect the muscle there is stimulation at the golgi tendon organ and the muscle relaxes so inverse stretch reflex up to a point the harder a muscle is stretch stronger is a reflex contraction however when the tension becomes great enough contraction suddenly ceases and muscle relaxes this relaxation in response to strong stretch is called as inverse stretch reflex this effect is also called as lengthening reaction so the receptor for the reflex is golgi tendon organ that consists of collection of knobby nerve endings so free nerve endings are there which are the receptor for this tension tendon organ detects muscle tension as reflected by tension in the muscle so when muscle is contracting tension is generated so they will assess the tension so beyond certain limits tension if this stronger and there is chance of avulsion from origin and insertion is there they get stimulated the tendon reflex prevents excessive tension in the muscle fibers from golgi tendon organs are 1b group of myelinated 1b fiber ends in the spinal cord on inhibitory interneurons that terminate directly on the motor neurons they also make excitatory connection with motor neurons supplying antagonist to the muscle so this muscle gets relaxed opposite will get contracted so this is the basically a protective response to protect the muscle from getting damage so when muscle gets contracted because of the stretch after certain limits this golgi tendon organ they get stimulated and they inhibit the muscle contraction and lead to muscle relaxation so it is a protective response so it is basically a negative feedback mechanism in the muscle contraction so muscle when muscle gets contracted beyond certain limit that contraction itself will initiate golgi tendon reflex and the muscle will go in relaxation so it is a inverse stretch reflex means because of stretch there is a relaxation so that is a reverse so initially in stretch reflex we have seen because of the stretch muscle gets contracted but here in the stretch muscle get relaxes but only after certain tension development so it is a negative feedback mechanism so this is the second response present in the muscle contraction to protect the muscle from getting damage now one more is there when a muscle stretch excites one muscle it often simultaneously inhibit the antagonist muscle which is the phenomena of reciprocal inhibition for example when you are stimulating the biceps muscle biceps muscle will get contracted but its antagonist muscle that is the triceps it must relax so for this there is a phenomena called as reciprocal inhibition so neural circuit that causes this reciprocal relation is called as reciprocal innervation so reciprocal innervation so here i am given example so this is our biceps muscle 
this is the triceps muscle now because of suppose anything their stimulation is given to the hand and we are, we are flexing the elbow joint so because of this movement what happens now because of painful stimulus impulse will go and it will stimulate this flexion of biceps muscle now when biceps is contracting what happens now simultaneously here you can see the impulse generated it is going to this and it is inhibiting antagonist that is a triceps muscle which must relax so this phenomena is called as reciprocal innervation means when biceps is contracting triceps gets relaxed on the contrary when you contract triceps biceps will get inhibited so it is reciprocal antagonist muscles will go under relaxation so when agonist is contracting antagonist will go in the relaxation so here again same phenomena i have shown here in the lower limb when a quadriceps is contracting the opposite muscle will get relaxation so here again same thing i have shown in this diagram so this is the phenomena of reciprocal innervation now effect of gamma motor neuron discharge we have learned in the first lecture also contractile ends of intraphyseal fiber shortens this stretches the nuclear back portion of spindles initiating impulse in 1a fibers reflex contraction of a muscle so when gamma motor neuron are stimulated there is a reflex contraction indirectly through alpha motor neurons only if the whole muscle is stretched during stimulation of gamma motor neurons the rate of discharge in 1a fiber is further increased thus increasing spindle sensitivity during stretch so it becomes more sensitive for the contraction and the muscle contraction is maintained especially when the posture we want to maintain the continuous contraction now control of gamma motor neuron discharge it is basically regulated by descending tracts originating in areas of the brain we will be discussing during control of muscle tone what are the areas which will send stimulation which will send inhibition different areas are there in the brain stem which are scattered why this pathways the sensitivity of muscle spindles and hence the threshold of stretch reflex in various parts of body can be adjusted and shifted to meet the needs of postural control other factors also influence gamma motor discharge especially the anxiety causes an increased discharge a fact that probably explains hyperactive tendon reflexes sometimes seen in anxious patients so when you are anxious in the previous lecture we have seen you get a physiological tremors are exaggerated similarly you get hyper reflex also there so when a person is very anxious that time if you take a tendon reflex you will, it will become hyperactive this is because increased gamma efferent discharge trying to pull hands apart when the fingers are flexed are hooked together that means we are trying to have a voluntary muscle contraction this is called as generosis maneuver because of this voluntary contraction also there is increase in gamma efferent discharge through spinal cord and muscle spindle sensitivity increases and we can elicit the reflex easily for example if some person we are not getting a reflex is properly deep reflexes we ask them to do this maneuver that is ask them to do strong voluntary contraction of any group of muscle in the body either we can hook the fingers or you can ask them to clench the teeth because of voluntary contractions all over the spinal cord there is increase in gamma motor discharge so this increases muscle spindle sensitivity and you get the reflexes easily so this may also be due to increase gamma motor neuron discharge initiated by afferent pimples from the hand so this finishes our physiology of reflexes 2 in the first lecture we have learned stretch reflex in the second we have learned stretch inverse stretch reflex and reciprocal innervation so this completes the reflex topic of uh, spinal cord then now we will continue the other that is reg uh, regulation of voluntary muscle activity and physiology of muscle tone thank you